So everybody, Negromancy for Kids here once again, this time with another discussion video, this time one that maybe is controversial, maybe not, depending on where you're coming at this from. I think a lot of modern players would probably disagree with this a lot. Some people that play uh, Go format might agree more than that, but I think this is a subject that uh, will be somewhat divided even if it's just everyone disagreeing with me. But as you can tell by the title of the video, this is about how I believe that Pot of Greed is good for GOAT format. Now, before I get too much into that, I want to acknowledge the problems with Pot of Greed, which are inherently it is pretty bad design uh, for a card game that has no resource system to just automatically draw two cards. In a fast paced game, especially, that is really bad uh, to include as uh, something in the card pool. It's just free advantage. And in a way, it does take away from skill in the game because someone can just top deck pot of greed and then their card advantage goes up automatically without having to have put any thought or anything into the process as well i'm sure that there's probably nowadays a lot of ways that you can abuse pot of greed repeatedly and even in gold format there are ways to repeatedly use pot of greed again and again and again for that card advantage however pot of greed does have its advantages in the game. Let me start uh, first by uh, sort of comparing it to the other cards that uh, people generally talk about when they're playing GOAT format, which are uh, Delinquent Duo and Graceful Charity. Graceful Charity lets you draw three, but you have to discard two, which is a net zero amount of cards, whereas Pot of Greed is a plus one amount of cards. And Delinquent Duo discards two cards in your opponent's hand, which is uh, net plus one card, essentially, because you are getting plus one advantage. Um, however, a lot of people that play the game will understand that Graceful Charity is actually technically better than Pot of Greed. Because Graceful Charity, while you're not getting a natural plus, it allows an extreme swing in what's in your hand as well as fills your graveyard which is extremely important in most formats and especially one like go format where you need a light and a dark for most of the strategies that people play and then when you get into like dark worlds and uh, cards like that graceful charity just has insane uh, swings in games so in that sense, Graceful Charity is probably one of the most imbalanced one of these three Trinity cards that people play in Go format. And as far as Lincoln Duo goes, there's actually a number of cases where Delinquent Lincoln Duo is useless. Besides, of course, your opponent just has no cards in their hand. But like if they have a Sinister Serpent or Night Assailant in their hand, you don't really want to discard those and you might not even be able to pay a thousand or maybe you lose because you paid a thousand life points however delinquent duo i think has uh, as the biggest sin even though there are ways to try to counter it with deck building and, and it's not always a blowout card the problem with it is that it is a net negative of fun uh, what I mean by that is something like Pot of Greed, when a player activates it, their opponent's going to be like, oh crap, that sucks. But they're only going to be kind of angry about it. But the person who activated Pot of Greed's going to be pretty darn happy about it. The person who activates Delinka Duo is going to be like, ha ha. But the person who gets hit with Delinka Duo is going to be potentially extremely unhappy. It might even just pretty much end the game right there, depending on what they uh, have in their hand or what they end up randomly hitting with it. And if you loop it again and again, it feels worse than if they're looping Pot of Greed again and again. Although, again, if you're looping it, you could technically still lose the duel. But 
I'm just speaking about from a perspective of fun at this point. And Graceful Charity is kind of like Pot of Greed, except, uh, again, it can fill the graveyard and unlock uh, all sorts of strategies that are inherently supposed to be more difficult to play. But because of Graceful Charity's existence, they're actually not that hard. And then being able to use it again and again filters through your deck very fast, even if you're not getting plus advantage every time you use it. So besides being, as I said, net uh, positive and fun for Pot of Greed, it does allow, one of the largest things about it is that it allows for players to be able to make comebacks. A lot of people don't like that because it, it seems like something that makes the game unskilled. In a way, it's like getting a critical hit, a random critical hit in a game when you top deck Pot of Greed and you activate it. And some people really like critical hits, some people really hate them. Uh, I know from a competitive standpoint, a lot of people uh, try to remove random critical hits, but there are situations that you can find yourself in by circumstance that you really can't win unless you draw two cards. And knowing that Pot of Greed is in the deck allows that tension to remain that maybe I'll draw a Pot of Greed and I'll be able to get those two cards that I need to win. Or if I could just top deck Pot of Greed, maybe I can turn this around. Something that you can't really get with something like Upstart Goblin. Which in GOAT format, uh, there's a lot of debate about what people think is the viability of Upstart Goblin. Because it does essentially thin your deck, but it does give your opponent a thousand life points. Which in most formats, a thousand life points doesn't really amount to anything. It's pretty much one tenth of the damage that you're going to do to them in a single turn. So who cares? But in GOAT format, if you're not playing an OTK deck, you're probably worried about how many life points your opponent has. And if your opponent survives with 1,800, 100 life points, that means they get an extra turn or an extra draw essentially to out whatever it is or win the duel uh, that you got with uh, Upstart Goblin. So in that sense, not a pure plus zero card. But I'm not here to talk about Upstar Goblin right now. I'm sure that someone uh, who understands math a lot better will be able to better tell you about Upstar Goblin and the chances of doing this and that with it and winning games and so, so on. Uh, so we're going back to Pot of Greed. The existence of Pot of Greed itself, a uh, number of people have said in the community, allows for control decks to exist in GOAT format because... They can keep generating advantage over time rather than having to sit there and generate the same amount of advantage as their opponent. Cards such as Magician of Faith allow for you to do that, uh, being flipped again and again with Tsukiyomi and, um, and Book of Moon, which if there weren't cards like Pot of Greed, it would be pretty rare that you would want to activate Book of Moon on your Magician of Faith. So Book of Moon itself becomes a worse card in that sense without the existence of Pot of Greed. Pretty much if you didn't have these three cards with uh, Magician of Faith, you'd pretty much have to get like Upstart Goblin, Heavy Storm, or Snatch Steel, which are still decent enough cards, but they don't feel nearly as worth it unless you really need them. The existence of Pot of Greed also, in a way adds to the validity and um, strategy involved with Solemn Judgment and things like Magic Jammer because most spells you really wouldn't want to use Solemn Judgment on except for like Heavy Storm and same for Magic Jammer. Pretty much Heavy Storm would be the like only spell card that you'd want to use if you didn't have cards like Pot of Greed that give players advantage and in that sense it allows for the player that has some judgment to sit with it longer and longer and longer and just make some judgment even better without pot of greed which i think we can all agree that some judgment is already pretty strong uh, as well uh the existence of pot of greed allows for certain cards to 
flourish again like magician of faith um with dark magician of chaos be getting back a spell card pretty much it would be relegated assuming we didn't have the the trinity you'd be relegated pretty much only to getting back otk cards as well pot of greed and the other trinity cards mean that some some casual strategies become more viable as a result such as uh, pixie knight control which pixie knight when it's destroyed by battle and sent to the grave you can select a spell card from your graveyard and place it on top of your deck pretty much if you didn't have trinity or cards like pot of greed you would never want to use that effect it would just be extremely horrible but because you can put pot of greed on top of your deck to essentially draw uh, an extra card for your draw phase it's pretty much how that works out pixie knight is actually an okay card and a fun card to use in casual strategies uh, same thing goes for grave robber if your opponent didn't have pot of greed to grab with grave robber would you really want to ever activate grave robber it's already so rare that somebody would want to activate this that without the existence of pot of greed i think uh at least in go format no one would ever want to uh consider even slightly grave robber which is almost an okay card and as well there's things like the spell counter strategies that are only viable because you have spell cards that you actually want to activate such as pot of greed if you didn't have pot of greed or other trinity spells you'd pretty much just be stuck with upstart goblin and heavy storm and tomb table of contents to give you your spell counters and basically you'd be playing subpar cards just to be able to facilitate an already subpar strategy i'm sure that there's a number of other things uh that people could think of to say to either condone the existence of pot of greed or to condemn it but this is a subject that i had been thinking about for a while and i decided to just kind of uh give you guys my personal thoughts uh without thinking too deeply about it uh on the subject feel free to let me know what you guys think in the comments i'm sure that a lot of people will disagree with me um but I think the very least, when you look at it, uh, Pot of Greed really isn't as heinous in a way as Graceful Charity or Delinquent Duo, um, because Graceful Charity, again, it digs deeper and it facilitates strategies like Chaos, which Pot of Greed is a card that helps every strategy, but Graceful Charity unfairly helps certain decks, if that makes sense to you. And Delinquent Duo, while sometimes it's useless, well, of course, even Pot of Greed and Graceful Charity can be useless if they'll deck you out. But Delinquent Duo, while it's sometimes useless or not very good, it still has the potential to end games. And it has at least a bad side effect of having a negative experience for your opponent that's beyond what they'll get from Pot of Greed or Graceful Charity. Thank you guys very much for watching, and I hope you have a good one.